A big change for San Francisco police. Officers will be getting tasers, but there's still a lot of disagreement on this issue. Now, the police commission voted four to three to give officers the new tool. San Francisco is one of the very last major U.S. cities where officers don't have these stun guns because of community opposition. Now, last year, the Department of Justice recommended that the city, quote, strongly consider stun guns so that they have an alternative to real guns. It's really used against brown and black communities uh, and mostly for failing the attitude test. Tasers are better than guns. If a cops are carrying tasers instead of guns, I would say there'd be a lot less shooting. Now the city says it'll cost roughly $8 million to equip every officer with a stun gun. But will every officer get a stun gun? Joining us now to talk about the tasers and where we go from here is San Francisco Police Commission President Julius Terman. Thank you for joining us this morning. When Thank this having... meeting was first scheduled, you sent out a very brief press release. It said we're having a special meeting at a special time, at a special date, outside of our perimeter to discuss and make a vote on one issue. Now, my political insight said, well, that means it's a slam dunk, it's going to happen, and that this is a formality. Was this, did you have the votes lined up for this going into this meeting? Absolutely not. To be honest with you, I didn't know which way I was going to vote until uh, the actual outcome of the meeting. Why? What was the back and forth? Tell me a little bit about the thinking. Well, to equip uh, our officers with tasers means that we need to consider a lot of issues. Uh, beyond public safety, officer safety, the reliability of the instruments, uh, the, the tech, the technology, the cost, um, a policy to implement, uh, what is the, the safe and, and most effective use of tasers. All of these are factors we had to think about. But these are all factors that we have been discussing and rediscussing for years in San Francisco and have models from around the country. I mean, it seemed like the knowledge had been sitting there for a long time. Why was this debate, was this politics or was it policy that we were dealing with? Well, I'm, certainly, I'm certain that politics plays some role for some people. It certainly wasn't a factor for me. But let's also remember that cost, the models of tasers, its technology, all of those issues change over time. So all of those issues need to be explored and discussed. Um, the Axiom, the producer of these um, uh, these uh, electronic control weapons, uh, they've changed models and what model two would we be using? What would the cost? All of those things need to be examined. Okay, but they weren't voted on at this meeting. What we voted on was the idea of equipping officers with tasers. There weren't any specifics involved, correct? Well, we didn't vote on whether or not the specifics, but certainly leading up to this point, we considered so, both a draft policy as well as implementation issues. But the first question was, is this a, a model that we want? Is this something we want our officers to have? That's what our community asked of us. Okay, so it was a narrow vote. Uh, I don't know if anybody's going to, if the fight's over or it's going to continue. Are San Francisco police officers going to get tasers? When are they going to get tasers? And how many of them are going to get tasers out of the gate? A lot of those questions are still unanswered. Uh, but I will tell you that as of uh, last night's meeting, on Friday night's meeting, uh, we voted that as of December of 2018, officers will be equipped with tasers. It is our hope that uh, only uh, officers with uh, CIT training. CIT being? Yes, uh, CIT being um, crisis intervention training will receive those tasers. Uh, and, and there is a difference right now between a 10-hour training up to a 40-hour training. My push would be, of course, for the 40-hour training. And then also whether or not we'd have a specific uh, group of individuals begin with tasers so we can study them a little bit more. But, but I would doubt that you'll ever see a situation where we're going to begin broadly distributing tasers to everyone. Okay. Well, that brings up critics in the past say that in, in past policies, what we've done is we say yes to tasers in some way. But but the policy actually doesn't really allow many to have them. It's, it's very confining how the use is. In other words, it, you wind up with a saying yes, but in so many ways saying no, that only these officers can have it, only under these conditions, only with this training, and it never gets out into the field in the numbers that will make a difference. 
Uh, I don't believe that's true. I think that, that whether or not tasers will actually get out into the entire field, I can't predict that right now. But I think that we need to have a safe policy, and I think that medical concerns uh, restrict as to how we can use tasers and who we can use tasers on. Okay. So, so certainly that, those are factors we're considering. Okay, so then it's still up to politics on this to a certain extent. You can say yes and say no in many ways. Well, I think that we have, at this point, said yes. I think that drafting the proper policy and implementing the tasers in a safe and effective way that serves the city and county of San Francisco is the next step in the okay. process. Okay. The Police Officers Association says they want every officer trained in crisis, they want every officer to have tasers, and they want defibrillators in case there's a medical emergency in every squad car. Do you see that as a policy? Is that viable? Uh, is, is it a, a viable policy from the beginning? No. Is it a viable policy ultimately? Absolutely. If that is the, if that is the direction that studying tasers from the beginning throughout uh, our use takes us in, certainly that's a viable policy. Well, we'll, we'll see which, when, when we're going to decide which policy we take. Well, we'll begin the process almost immediately. We're hoping to have a draft policy for the, the, for the commission to review within 30 days. So, in other words, it's just starting. This is a step. It's not the final one. Julius Terman, thank you for joining us this morning. This Thanks story is going to continue on, and I'm sure it's going to make national and local debates. <laughs>